Come on in, welcome to my home. Today, I want you to think before you say, no problem. Now, a lot of times when people ask us to do something, our first response is, oh sure, no problem. Well, is it? I mean, really, is it no problem? Because there are going to be a lot of things that you do which actually and truly are no problem. You do them, you, you do them while you're doing something else, and it is no problem. But not everything that you do will be no problem. Now, one of the most bizarre things that we do in this world is tell people that things aren't a problem because of a few reasons. One, we don't want them to think that we are any less of a person because we had to struggle to do something. And that's silly. I mean, if you struggled to do something, it's okay. So you, are, you can't do something as easily as somebody else does it. No big deal there. But also we tell people that it's no problem when we don't want them to feel guilty about what they asked us to do or what they made us do. And that is also a problem <laughs> because sometimes people will take advantage of that it's no problem stance. And that's where you have your biggest problems. Because when people take advantage of that, it just becomes a bigger, bigger problem. And it's a problem you created. It's a problem that you created by giving them the impression that, hey, it's no problem that I did this. When, like I said, it's actually a big, big problem. I'm here to tell you that it is okay for you not to be able to do something as well as somebody else does. Now you're confused. You're saying, well, how does this relate to anything what you were talking about? How does this relate to it's no problem? Well, simple. If you are using the excuse it's no problem so that you make yourself feel better or seem better or like you can do the work better or just as good or whatever and you can't, that's a, once again, that's a problem. It's okay. We all have our special skills. When it comes to, as I'm listening to this, you might even be able to hear it, cutting the grass. I am allergic to grass, so I can't cut grass. When it comes to painting, I am a horrible, horrible painter. I don't even try to do that. So if somebody were to ask me to paint, it would be a problem. And that's okay, because you wouldn't ask somebody to do something that you know is hard for them. Okay, you can see where, the, I mean, that just blatantly makes sense. But when you set this up, it's no problem. And it is a problem because it's hard for you to do. You've created your own problem. You, by not being honest with people, you've set this up so that people believe that it really is no problem. And why shouldn't they believe you? I mean, you shouldn't be lying to people, right? I mean, why would we think that you would lie to them? That doesn't make any sense because you would think that you would just be flat out honest and say, hey, this is a problem. I can't do that. Now, some of this I'm going to blame on being polite. And I mentioned this before. We want to make sure that people don't feel uncomfortable. Because we hate for people to make people feel uncomfortable. And them using us to do things might make them feel uncomfortable. But sometimes it's okay to make them feel uncomfortable. Or the worst one is, you say it's no problem, it's a problem. You do it, and you don't do it in a really good way. And they're unhappy with this. But you said it was no problem. You said it was going to be, by, in, by saying that, you were saying it's going to be easy. That it would be no problem for you to do this, and what was I supposed to expect? Once again, mowing the yard. Sure, I can cut your yard, but I'm going to swell up and be sneezing, my eyes are going to be runny. It's going to be an absolute mess. Nobody wants that. You don't want that. I don't want that. And that's probably going to make whoever asked me to cut their yard feel even worse. So I will flat out say, we got a problem. We have a problem because I'm allergic to grass. Sometimes you shouldn't even have to say that this is a problem. You should just be able to say, I can't do that. And that should be the end of the conversation. Because when you say, I can't do that, do you really have to give a reason? No, I've talked about this before. But when you set this up, and I mean, this is so important because the holiday season is coming up. It's coming up really, 
really soon. And from what I've been seeing in the news and what I've been told from various retailers and that sort of thing, getting gifts and that sort of thing is going to become an issue. You're going to need to have done all these things, you know, dotted all of your I's, crossed all of your T's, made sure that you have your shopping list all done up and everything way before it's time for those gifts to go out. And if you didn't, it's it's a problem because people are going to want to come to you and say, Hey, can you do this for me? Can you make this for me? Because I personally think that you're going to see a lot of Christmas gifts that are going to need to be made this year. And if you have to make it, especially if you're one of these people who's an artist, your no problem could become a problem, especially if people are expecting you to give those things away for free. And we, I see that a lot with artists. I know I have a lot of artist friends who are like, they expect family and friends expect them to just give their stuff away for free because they're family and friends. Well, that's not exactly how that works. Sure, they might be able to, they might love to, but ask them. And hopefully if you are one of them, be honest with people. Just tell them right up front, hey, I can do this for you. However, this is what I'm going to need. It might be money, it might be supplies, I don't know. I don't know, because I mean, I've gotten this where I had a person ask me, because this showed up on my Facebook feed the other day. A person called me up, I think it was at like 10 o'clock at night, and they asked me if I could make something like four dozen or 40 dozen cookies for an event that was the next day. No. No, 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 no. And when I was doing a whole bunch of recipes, I always got the request from places that were having bake sales if I could make this cookie again or that cookie again. And I'm like, I've just done that recipe. Uh, and they're like, well, you could put it on your YouTube channel. I'm like, that's where you saw the recipe. I can't just put the same recipe on my cook on a YouTube channel again. And they're like, but we really want it. It would be good exposure for you. No. No, it wouldn't. And that's when I would tell them, it is a problem. So what exactly happens once you start telling people that it's a problem? Well, people seem to start respecting your time more. And that, for me, is where I run into my biggest problems. My time <laughs> becomes a big issue. The grocery store thing can be a big issue because I live in a neighborhood where there are lots of people who can't easily get to the grocery store. And that's okay. And can we talk about those little trips that'll take only a few seconds for you to run right into the store? I don't know where you live, but where I live, the store is not near me. No, the closest store is about five minutes away from my house. You're like, okay, no problem. I mean, it's only five minutes. Well, no, no, it's not only five minutes. You have to get in the car. Cool. You have to drive to the store, no problem, go into the store, no problem, drive back home, no problem, then drop off whatever you're getting or put it away or do whatever. Okay, so that it's only going to take five minutes turns out to be like 25 to 30 minutes. Yeah. Maybe running to the store really is no problem, but if you just came back to the store and you have to go to it, go to it again, that can become a problem. That can eat into your day. The other thing to think about is when doing a task is sometimes a task doesn't take that long. It's just waiting for everything for the task can take a while. So that's something to think about. Sure, it might be no problem doing the task, but leading up to it could be a problem. And so it's just like, yes, if I'm going that way, no problem. You tell me what you want. I'm going to the store. I will get it for you. Cool. But when you ask me to make an extra trip, think about what else, you have to think about what else am I doing? Because there are days when I am literally doing nothing, and you ask me to do something, I am so happy to do it for you. But there are other days, like today, when I am doing something, and it takes all day, uh, my grocery store, my grocery trip to this morning, uh, they were running late, so it took about 25 minutes on top of what it normally takes. So yeah, it's okay to say no. It's okay to say it is a problem. The other part about this is if somebody tells you it's a problem, don't demand an explanation. Well, why is it a problem? They really don't owe you that. All they owe you is the whole, can you do this? Yes or no. No, I can't. I'm sorry. 
No, I can't. I won't. Yeah. But the only way you're going to get people to understand this is if you actually tell them if it is or isn't a problem. Be honest with them. Just because you can do something doesn't mean that it was easy to do, doesn't mean that it was free to do, doesn't mean that you didn't spend ridiculous amounts of money to do something. I just watched this really cool video where a woman made this dress, and it's a gorgeous Victorian, maybe Edwardian, I think it's Victorian, Victorian style dress. Materials alone would have been, were $893. Once she factored in the time that it took her and her th two friends to do the dress, the dress ended up being about $6,000. Because, you know, you'd have to pay yourself for that. Now, if your friends are asking you to do something for them, yeah, your time is money. Because your time could be spent doing something. And I get this all the time since I work from home and obviously I don't do anything. All I do is just sit around on the computer. So my time is free. No, my time is money. My time is money. So yeah, I will tell people straight up front, I'm sorry, I can't do that. It is a problem. Or I can do that? No problem. Just depends. But the only way you're going to get people to believe you is if you are honest. Tell them from the beginning, yes, I made this for you and it was sort of difficult. Or yes, I made this for you, took a lot of work, but I enjoyed it. That can be another one too. Just because something takes a lot of work didn't mean that you didn't have fun doing it. If you had fun doing that, it might have been, it wasn't that it was no problem. It was just, I had fun doing this because I have a lot of projects like that. Decorating my house, to me, it's not a major problem, but it does take a lot of time and some effort and some planning, And I, but I have fun doing this. I have a blast. When people ask me if I'll come over and do their house, I'm like, we. <laughs> it takes a lot of work. Do you know what you have? No. Do you have any of your stuff laid out? No. So you're saying that if you want me to come over and help you decorate, we're going to have to go through all of your stuff, plan it out, and then get it decorated, and you want this done by this evening. That's a problem. So what about you? What do you think about that? Let me know down in the comments. I know some of you are probably going, Well, you're just being self-centered and only thinking about yourself on this. Maybe. Maybe I am. Maybe I'm just thinking about myself but maybe I'm also thinking about what kind of quality of work can I give to you if it's going to be a problem. Because if it's going to be a problem, I can't give you my best quality of work. And if I'm going to do something for somebody, I want it to be my best. So that way, it's no problem and you enjoy it. Let me know down in the comments what you think and I hope I get to see you next time.